Oh, man. Big drama show. Big drama show. Triple G boxing. You know, what's funny is I ain't much of a Triple G fan. You know, I don't really pay much attention to him. Probably more to do with the people around him than him personally. So, I mean, it is what it is. But a lot of people have been asking, why, why would he still take the fight with Canelo with him popping dirty like that? Well, the issue is the options are all bad for Triple G. If he, if the Canelo fight gets sus- suspended, it gets canceled or whatever, one, he misses out on the payday. And then next, the worst is his mandatories are beast. Behind door number one. Jermel Charlo. Charlo. The one is if he beats Triple G, guess what, Triple G? You're deleted. Everybody says you're a hype job, man. Sucks. But that's part, hey, well, you know, when it was good for the goose and you wanted to roll, it was all about the mandatories. That was the big thing, right? So, Charlo, that's your first option. Let's go to the second option. Andrade. Wow. Now, I don't know much about Andrade at 160 because, you know, I've always heard about how good he is and this, that. I haven't really seen him against elite competition, but that's a dangerous fight. Very dangerous. See, the thing about Triple G is he's got a way with fighting guys that have had some kind of flaw that makes it so he can beat them. You know, the movers he fought didn't have no power. So it's easy to look good against that. It's easy to walk through that type of pressure. But Triple G, man, these options are getting bad for you. Then we got the the, the artist formerly known as Billy Ho, who's shown skill level at a high intensity. The man has great boxing ability. Great boxing ability. Um, He can take that because the unification fight can outweigh um, a mandatory. That's another tough fight, man. That's and that option's bad. That's option. And, and really, be honest, it looks like Triple G's trying to cash out and lead the game before he gets too far exposed. And we got another option: a rematch with Daniel Jacobs, which to me, now that I'm thinking about, it, might be the best option because he actually has beat Jacobs. Now, now I know a lot of people saw the first fight and said. Oh, I think Jacobs might have won. He might have took that. Well, the thing about it is Jacobs could have made it definitive, man. It ain't like he lost a bunch of rounds, but when you get these close rounds and you're just doing enough to think you might irk through, I still believe in old school status. You got to take the championship. You got to take it. You can't win no fight, barely winning a couple rounds here and there and just icking it out with a one extra punch. You got to go take the championship. And I, I think Jacobs left some stuff on the table. To be honest, I think if Jacobs gives a rematch, he, he's going to realize the mistake he made in the first fight and go ahead and follow up and get it done this time, you know? But Triple G, man, I know it. So that's why he was ruling the fight Canelo, even though he popped dirty. Because it's like, okay, um, this is a big payday. I possibly can win this fight because Canelo gassed in the first one. Um... This, this is my best option. I'm running out of options. The reality is we've all found out he wasn't really trying to unify. I mean, that was the big thing before. Oh, he's trying to unify. No, he's not because he would have went ahead and fought Saunders and got this mess over with. He's been sitting around trying to get a bag. Trying to get a bag. It, it's, it, I hate to say it, but it might be just plain karma coming back. Coming back for all that crap, all them lies, the disrespectful comments of Mexican style. Like, I mean, that's that's a joke. I mean, this this whole idea that you, that he fought some kind of style that was specific to, to Mexicans and natives. Man, I've seen a lot of Mexican fighters. I like a lot of Mexican fighters. Their styles are very diverse. And to sit there and try to say that they just got one style and this is how they fight and this is why you should watch it. This is the hustle game. They're trying to hustle you guys into enjoying this guy. And the reality is, when I seen him in big fights, there was no such thing as what they proceed to call a Mexican style. He's not Margarito. 
That's you know, if you want to call Mex a style Mexican style, that's Mexican style. That that's the closest thing. If I was thinking, if somebody said that ignorant shit to me, I would go for that because um, uh, Garcia don't fight like that. I mean, I Mikey Garcia it boxes, man. If anything, he idolizes Floyd Mayweather. He's about as messy as you can get. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya didn't fight like that. So what, were they not Mexican style? Were they not exciting? Of course they were. So that's it's just silly. So maybe your karma's coming back on you because you've been selling this hype. And once again, you fought Canelo, who's about as Mexican as you could get, and he doesn't fight like that. Yeah, Canelo is an excellent boxer. The first three or four rounds in that first fight, Canelo got some good skills. I, I had seen them skills trying to present themselves when he fought Floyd way back in the day. The problem is there's just levels to being a boxer, and Floyd is just as good as it gets. And you're not going to outbox him. Sorry. It wasn't none of this nonsense about it being too soon. That's a joke. It's disrespectful to Canelo to say that. He was a unified 154-pound champion. He was ready. He got in there, and he just got mastered. That's just all there is to it. I mean, sometimes it happens. And the good thing is it happened to Floyd because everybody pretty much acts like it never happened. So it is what it is. But Triple G backed into a corner. Man, just, just go ahead and get your medicine. Go ahead and fight Charlo and get beat. Let him collect all them belts up real quick because he's going to go over there and handle that Saunders business if Saunders fights him. I don't know. L lately, a lot of these, I don't know, man. Saunders might have that belt in captivity over there in the U.K. I don't know. He's been talking a lot of big games. There's going to be consequences. You're going to have to deal with the results of your mouth running. You know, that's what I'm going to say. The middleweight division then got hot real quick, man. There's it's a lot of good fights in there. Like I said, I, you know, they call him Boot. I, I don't like that. And and drop. You know, he's in there, like I said, but I don't know what to say. I, I haven't really seen him. Not, I, I feel like when I talk about it, and I don't want to compare him to Broner because that's messed up, but it's like the whole talk when they talk about Broner. Oh, he has potential. He's one of the best fighters in the game, and he has all the skills. And I just haven't really seen him do it against elite competition, so I don't know. That might be the best fight, you know? You know what I'm saying? So there's a whole lot of fights to happen out there, man. These titles are best. It's going to get unified one way or another because Jamar Charles is going to collect those belts. He's not going He's not going to sit back and get one and say, hey, well, let me get this. It is what it is. So unfortunately, Triple G, the clock then ran on you, man time has expired and it looks like you just ain't got no good options it's your boy that boxing talk king of kings alabama's finest you know the youtube channel if you haven't subscribed go ahead and click and subscribe yeah man let's do this let's do this every day i'm coming with new content fresh content with the hottest opinions you know how we do it